death now. Get out of the town. We get uh, a little slow this time. We get on to our Lord King Jesus Christ. We get Dean back in the house one more time. We get a uh, rep to our pastor, Pastor Lutz, and, and after our guest speaker tonight, and after our uh, two events, Dr. Knight and uh, Minister Powell. But we're glad to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. And we just pray to give God all the glory for that. I'm going to ask if someone this time give an open sign of your choice. I'm going to come back with a scripture. Then I ask Dick and Megan to lead us in prayer in their order. Amen. 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 Do you want to have a song for us? Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Let's Eternal God, 
Because again, our Father, we come before you. We come, oh Father, thanking you for another day. Thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for last night's rest. For realizing, Father God, when we lay you down, it was your grace and your mercy allowed us to receive another day. And Father, for that, we just want to tell you thank you. We come this afternoon, Heavenly Father, asking you to bless each and every one here on tonight. Yes. Bless the one that is on, on call, Lord. Because, mm -hmm. Father God, we realize we all need to be revived. Yes, so, Father, we just ask you to just touch us in a mighty way. Yes, and, God, we'll just give you the glory and the praise. Mm -hmm. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, for the three-night revival. Yes. Oh, Father God, we ask you to bless the man that he brings forth the word on tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father God, we know that there is a word from you. Yes. So God, we actually just bless, bless it, this revival, Lord. Mm -hmm. God, and we'll give you the praise and the glory. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we actually bless the sick and the shut in. Mm -hmm. Bless the one that is going through for reading. Yes. Oh, Father, we, we ask in all these blessings. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for the open hand. Thank you that you made for the uh, prayer. And I did uh, a testimony service in the old whatever the Lord had laid on your heart by song, by pray, uh, whatever the Lord had desired uh, you to do. Amen. For the Lord is good. Amen. And, 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 and it's just a blessing to be here. Now, I listen to the news. Just before I got here, just sometimes I knew I read. School hadn't been open a whole week yet. Not a whole week. And there already been a death in school already. Already a step. Already. Hadn't been a whole week. And you think that you are not blessed just to be able to be in the house of the Lord today? Somebody needs to say amen. Somebody needs to say hallelujah. Because you know what? Even though it may not be our children, we're still with somebody yeah, child. Yes. I mean, it's still a deal. And they didn't give a name because it, it should be called they were minor. I'm the age. Know the scripture that I read. For the days of evil. We live in some evil days. Yeah. People don't mind killing one another. Like they're nothing to it. They don't mind stealing things. They don't mind disrespecting nobody now. They are very evil day and not only do we need a revival here at Allen, but the world right. help me somebody. Yeah, that's right. These are evil times yeah. that we're living in. Yeah. And every change, every opportunity we get to sound praise of it. Yeah. Just to wake up this morning. Yeah. It works in Lord Amen. I thank you. Thank you. It is it, 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 the reason I said uh, of the night uh, uh, while we're here, the ten reasons I can give him a, a thank you, a praise, because he woke me up this morning. Amen. He woke you up this morning too. Amen. So I'm saying right now, it, who knows what tomorrow is going to bring? But we know what the day has already brought. Amen. But we also know the one that holds today and tomorrow. Yeah. Right. The seat set high and look low. Mm -hmm. So we got to give him the praise. We got to give him the glory because every opportunity we get. It's just a bless, another bless coming our way. So you have a song, you have a prayer, whatever the Lord lay on your heart today. Say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, So good to me. 
myself. Yeah. And for that, I just want to say thank you. I want to thank God for life, health, and strength. Thank him for my family. Thank, for, thank him for all that he has done for me, all that he will continue to do. For those of you who know the word of prayer, continue to pray for me and my family, and I will do the same for you. Amen. 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 Truly, I thank the Lord for my being here. And the song said, Lord, I just want to thank you. I can't sing it, but I can tell the Lord thank you. God has been good to me, and I just thank him every day. I just had so much to thank the Lord for. You know, you know even getting the good news um, about the grandson. Possibility of coming home tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. through it all, I still yeah. thank the Lord. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. you were the one brought in here, yeah. and you know, you're the one that keep you here. Yeah. So I just thank God for what you're doing. Thank, thank you for everything. Yeah. You know, I could say a million things, mm. but most of all, Lord, I thank you. Amen. Amen. As y'all continue praying for me, and I pray for you the best I know how. Amen. 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 The doctor, I do have. Y'all hear me tell y'all last night? I try to practice singing this song. You might know, get a church program, especially here. I was never really looking at things, but if somebody says, "Deacon May, do this." I'm ready to do it. I don't have my name on it. So, uh, 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 I didn't see you had to sign on back to the program. Even I had him book the house. I pulled the him book out and looked at it. I didn't try to press no song. I just left that alone today. Uh, but I, it, it just, it's just amazing. I, I didn't look at it and see it on the back of the uh, program. But, uh, I just said, sometimes I ain't nothing but have a little joy in the church sometimes. We don't even come to church all the time right here, huh, and now, do we? Yeah. We all come yeah. right here and look up yeah. for a praise. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the one thing that Satan can have a walk around right here, by and by all day, but when we get here, this, 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 we, we all be lift up in spirit yeah. somehow, some way. Yeah, for everything, this is a life night of our God yeah. here. Just going to put everything away, let loose, let go, let the Holy let Spirit go. have it way tonight. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let, 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 uh, we, we, we got a lot. Amen. Hallelujah. Let, let's give it all we got tonight. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then you say it's uh, it may be my last time. I'm not going to try to sing. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe my last time. I ever see all you together again. I don't know. Amen. But that's why I'm here. Why are you here? Well, we're, yeah, right. we're going to give the Lord a praise. Maybe my last time. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I see when my daughter took my little grandson out. She can bring it back in. I, I take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, this may be my last time. This may be my last time. This may be my last time.
And as the minister said on Monday, uh, Tuesday night, really, you know, a lot of times we get caught up in numbers. Yeah. Those who are here are those the ones that need to be here. Uh -huh. what, the question is, how do you respond to the word that you receive? Amen. If you accept this as the word of God, and will you move forward? Trusting in the Lord, because God has brought us a mighty long way. Amen. He woke us up this morning, yeah. and I'm so glad about it, because if had he not woke me up this morning, I wouldn't be here. If had he not woke me up here, this, woke me this morning, I wouldn't be able to tell my wife I love her. If it had not woke me this morning, I would not be able to talk with my children and my grandchildren. If he had not awakened me this morning, I wouldn't be able to stand here tonight and tell you that God is good. Yeah. 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 All the time. All the time. Put food on my table. Yeah. Clothes on my back. Yeah. Provide a roof over my head. Yeah. God has blessed me even when I didn't deserve it. Yeah. I can't say I deserve it now. But he's looked beyond my faults and sees my very need. And I'm thankful for that tonight. So as we come tonight, say where the two or three are gathered together in his name, we can make a noise tonight. We can lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We can make a rowdy noise. If we want to. Yeah, yeah. If we think about all that God has done. Yeah. You know, last year this time, I was a few weeks out from, from surgery. Mm -hmm. Not knowing whether, the, whether I will come through or not. But the Lord brought us through. Yeah. Yeah. And I had to be on the situation because a few weeks after my surgery, Sheriff Hubert Peterkin had his surgery. But the outcome was different. That could have been me. Yeah, but God has been good to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. He's just been good to me. I can't tell it all. I'm not the smartest. Not the best looking. Don't talk the best. But God has a <laughs> And we get caught up with everybody else talking about what we look like. How we sound. Uh -huh. But God has a purpose. Yes, and the thing is, we will, will we live out his purpose. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have life everlasting. Yes. For we know that all things work together to the good of those. Who love the Lord yes. and are called according to His purpose. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Now, some of y'all want me called according to your purpose, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm called according to His purpose. Yes, right. Right. Yes. And I pray that I continue to live out His purpose. Yes. Amen. We are here tonight on this, the final night of this revival. We do have the congregational singing tonight. Those that have been appointed to sing, you know who you are, you know what you're going to do. So let us rise to our feet, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let us sing together. Amen. Amen. What a fellowship, dude. What a joy divine I believe. I'm leaning on Jesus, everlasting arms. What a blessedness, do what a peace is mine. I'm leaning, I'm leaning on Jesus, everlasting arms. Oh, yes, I'm leaning. I'm leaning on Jesus. Oh, I'm leaning. I'm leaning on. I'm leaning on Jesus. Oh, I'm leaning. I'm leaning. 
time to say thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for another day and another hour that you have presented us with. Yes. Father, as we come tonight at Anderson yes. Chapel, dear Lord, yes. we come for neither form nor fashion, dear Lord, but we come, dear Lord, Father, for your word. We come for the word, dear Lord, that will touch our hearts, that will change our minds, that will revive us, dear Lord, that we may be rededicated and to your service, dear Lord. So, Father, right now, I thank you, dear Lord, yes. for every aspect of this yes. service tonight. Most of all, dear Lord, I thank you for thy Son, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave his life on Calvary's cross for a poor sinful wretch like me. Now, Father, be with us through the course of this service, dear Lord. Touch the speaker of the hour, dear Lord. Father God, that he, we let him down at the storehouse of wisdom, dear Lord. Father God, that the words that he shared with us tonight, dear Lord, will be the words, dear Lord, that we need tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. At this time, we're going to have someone from the mother's ministry. No one has been pre-designated. Someone from the mother's ministry will come and give us a welcome tonight. Amen. 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 First, give an honor to God, um, Pastor Lewis, Reverend um, Walker, and um, Deacon's mother, saints, and friends. It is indeed an honor and a blessing and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. And I know that um, you share with me in saying that we are so grateful, we're so grateful for his goodness to allow us to reach this point that we could be here, that we could fellowship together, that we may get the word of God, that we yeah. could have our souls revived, that we can go forth on our Christian journey doing a little bit better, knowing a little bit more, and feeling a little bit better, yeah. and acting a whole lot better than what we was. So on behalf of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family, on behalf of our wonderful pastor, Reverend Malcolm Lewis, we say to all visitors, we say to our guest minister, thank you, and welcome, welcome, welcome Amen. for sharing with us Amen. tonight. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, Mother Johnson. This time, it's a great honor and privilege to be able to introduce the evangelist for the week. Uh, everyone is inside this building here tonight knows him. Amen. And if you did not know him, he has already introduced himself to you this week. Amen. He is a man of God. He is a preacher of the Word of God, the teacher of the Word of God, the lover of the Word of God, and lover of mankind. And he has come this week to graciously share with us. And he has told us on Monday night, and that is glad to be in the service one more time. And he reminded us last night that God already knows. I said, we can act the way we want to act and think that others don't know. But God already knows. So I'm glad God knows. And I'm glad that he looks beyond my thoughts and sees my very need. So tonight, I present to you the Reverend Dr. Timothy J. Walker, the pastor of Walnut Grove, uh, the uh, Missionary Baptist Church of Lewisburg, and Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church of Emporia, Virginia. We had a little conversation back there earlier. As they, I told him I said last. I always think of that as skippers. He says it's right there on the line. So emporial skippers either way he is the pastor and the leader and our evangelist and speaker for the night hear him for what God has given to him Amen. for this body this night Amen. come on those that are de designated to say give us another selection following this selection you will hear the voice of God yeah. Tell me what more can I do? Tell me what more can I do? The Lord, I'm your child. You.
Church shout amen. 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 Come on, let's say amen again. Amen. amen. Our God is great and he is great to be praised. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, yeah. his name is worthy. Amen. And he has blessed us again to be in the number, to be part of this revival service. And for that we are eternally grateful. Yeah. Yes. I come to report that God is good on a Thursday night. Amen. Yeah. 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 Glad I don't have to wait till Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Acknowledge yeah. how good He is. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we give honor to the Spirit of Christ tonight for blessing us and allowing our moments to roll on just a little while longer. We thank God for your pastor, my friend, Pastor Lewis. Come on, let's praise God for the pastor. Yeah. Yeah.
nights of service. Uh, it is risky business when you allow uh, someone to come and feed the flock. That's why there has to be prayer as we ask God to lead us and guide us. And so we are, we are grateful for this opportunity to come and to share. And we solicit your prayers again tonight as we look into God's divine word. If you have your Bibles, if you would take them and uh, turn to uh, Mark chapter number 14. Mark chapter number, number 14. And I want to begin reading at verse number 1. The gospel is recorded by Mark chapter number 14, beginning at verse number 1. You will find a familiar account of God's divine word. Verse 1, after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. They said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And I'm going to stop right there. Verse 3 says, and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. I want to preach uh, with the uh, prayers of the saints and the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit uh, from this thought when Jesus is in the house. Amen. Amen. Jesus is in the house. If you don't mind, could you just repeat those words after me? When Jesus is in the house. When Jesus is in the house. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you for uh, these nights of service and the request for revival. And we are keenly aware that a revival would never happen. If you don't send the revival down. Amen. So we ask, Master, that you and you alone will be glorified again tonight. Use this broken vessel to declare your divine word. And Master, you get all of the honor, glory, and the praise. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 When Jesus is in the house. Throughout the word of God, my brothers and sisters, as the ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is recorded, we recognize that there are very few times <clears throat> that it is recorded that Jesus is in the synagogue. Very few times does the word talk about him being in a church. Most of his ministry uh, was recorded in individual houses, on dusty streets, in boats. He had a ministry that was mobile in nature. He was not confined to one place, for his ministry moved abroad. Tonight, I'm on assignment to share with those of us that are in this room and those that are listening by conference call that it makes a difference when Jesus 
is in the house. Amen. Will it be our synagogues? No, for there were accounts when he came in the synagogue. And when he came in the synagogue, or wherever he was, his presence was impactful. In other words, he made and still makes a difference. Yes, yeah. yeah. And if we are operating under the umbrella of Christianity, and there is no difference made in our lives, it comes to us to ask the question, is Jesus really in it? Amen. Amen. It is important, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ is the center and the focus of all we do, especially in this hour, because time is indeed winding up. Amen. And so Jesus now, on the backdrop of a miracle that he performed, uh, in John's Gospel, in the 12th chapter, is on the backdrop of Jesus as he has an encounter with some friends in Bethany. And just because Jesus Christ had friends in Bethany, and when those friends, Mary and Martha, summons him to come because they had what was to them an extremely important issue. Their brother, Jesus' friend, was sick. And as a matter of fact, Mary and Martha, uh, they expressed it that way, that Lazarus, our brother, your friend, is sick. And we know because of the relationship that we have enjoyed down to the years, we know, Jesus, that you are going to rearrange your schedule to come see about us. Well. But those of you that are Bible readers know the story. You know that Jesus did not get in a hurry because those things that are urgent to us might not be important to him. Yeah. I, I need to say that again because there are some things that we classify and we put under the category of urgency. But Jesus lets us know everything that's urgent to you is not important to me. Amen. Amen. That's why we talked about on last night trying to know, having the knowledge of the will of God, longing to know his will, longing for him to reveal to us the way, the why, and the how to handle life. So Jesus delays his coming and he says something to his disciples that shocked me at first read uh, when his disciples began to uh, question him about his delaying. He says that Lazarus is dead and I'm glad. Well, Amen. 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 He said Lazarus is dead. And I am glad well. for your sakes. There are sometimes, my brothers and sisters, things that we will have to go through that we don't understand. We will ask why, and if we are not careful, we will begin to question God about what he is doing. But I'm glad God does not have to answer our questions about his will. Because if he told us everything that he was going to do, we couldn't handle it anyhow. That's right. That's right. Well, the master shares with us, he does share the beginning. He says, I am the Alpha. He tells us, I am the Omega. He tells us, if you stay with me, you will be more than victorious. You will be more than conquerors. He tells us, just hang on in there. In my own time, your change will come. But rarely does God disclose what's going to happen in the middle. Amen. Amen. Because many of us could not handle. If God, just think about your own life. Think about the ups and downs, the ebb and the flows that you have encountered. And think about it. If God would have shared with you what you were going to go through, many of us would have abandoned the gospel campaign right away. Yeah. All right. 
And I'm glad that there are some things that God does not reveal, yeah. even though he lets us know that he's with us. Yeah. Yeah. That he will never leave us nor forsake us. And after all of that, after, after coming and not just performing a miracle, because that's what Mary and Martha were asking for the master. We need another miracle. We, we've seen you open blinded eyes. We've seen you heal those that were hurt. And we need you to do the same thing in the life of our brother, your friend. But Jesus says in substance, I'm going to transcend miracles and I'm going to give you a sneak preview of the resurrection. I'm going to show you what I'm going to go through myself for your sins, how I'm going to nail them to the cross, how, I, how I'm going to be beaten, how I'm going to be ridiculed for your sake, but how I would get up on the third day with all power in my hand. And that's what the master did. He came. He came. Even though Mary and Martha shook their bony fingers in Jesus' face and said, if you would have been here, our brother would not have died. Uh, Jesus should have told them, well, if you think I can stop him from dying, you ought to know I can wake him up from death. There are no dead lines with the master. There are dead lines with us. But there are no dead lines with the master. Whenever he gets there, he's right on time. And, and, and so Jesus comes, and now Lazarus is alive, and you will find that in John chapter 12. But I like the way Mark records this story. Mark says that this was uh, the feast. Two days was the feast of the Passover and of eleven bread, and the chief priest and scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Mm. Yes. Let me tell you something, Anderson Chapel, and those that are listening, that whenever you hear those words, whenever you see that individuals have chief, have titles on their names, but are spewing out death and destruction out of their lips, that's a good indication who their father is. The thief comes for but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It's not our job to get back at anybody. It's not our job to get down and dirty with anybody. Hear me when I tell you, it's not our job to give folk a piece of our mind. You better hold on to your mind. <laughs> Amen. You don't know when you're going to need it. You don't know amen, what's around the curve. Amen. There are some battles that we are not designed to fight. There are too many that call themselves Christians, but are always scheming, conniving, under trying to undercut somebody, trying to craftily put somebody to death, trying to steal, kill, and to destroy. But that is a trick of the devil. The Bible says they they said we have a plan, we have some meetings we've been attending, we have a scheme that we want to put in motion, but we can't do it now because we don't want an uproar of the people. We know what we're doing is wrong. We don't want to disturb the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon. Jesus was in the house. Not only was Simon, who had been a leper, not only was he in the house, but Simon, who used to be a leper, Lazarus, who was dead, and there were a whole lot of other folk, disciples, that had a was in their lives. <laughs> You might not want to admit it, but all of us are ex something. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Come on, Amen. And, and, and all of us have some skeletons in our closet. Yeah. And the reality is, if you open that closet, you may find that there are still some meat on some of those. <laughs> but all my brothers and sisters, Jesus is still in this house. Yeah. I want us to know tonight that Jesus will come in our houses. He'll come into our hearts. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice 
and open the door and let me in. I'll come in. I'll sup with you. I'll fellowship with you. I'll change your situation. I'll make an impact in your life if you let me in your house. Madison Chapel, the master wants to come in. He wants to, he wants to come in our house. He wants to rule and he wants to reign. He wants to be Lord of all or not Lord at all. Did you hear what I said? He wants to be Lord of all. He does not just want us to call him when we are in trouble. He does not just want us to call him when we need a quick fix, when we need a healing, when we need a bill paid. He wants us to seek not only his hand, but his face. So Jesus, you understand, is in the house. And the Bible says, being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, also Lazarus there, was there. There was a woman, Mary, that came, and she had a precious ointment. She broke the box. She anointed, Mark says, the head of Jesus. There are individuals that read the Bible and think that the Bible is contradicting in its nature. But even though Mark said that she anointed and poured the ointment on his head, John said that she anointed the feet of Jesus. Amen. Both of them can be right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you don't believe it, get home tonight and pour some oil on your head. <laughs> And watch it flow down your body. Amen. And if you don't mess with it, it'll end up on your feet. Amen. 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 And so, so the Bible declares, the Bible declares, Mark sees one thing, John sees another. But Jesus is in the house. This woman has this alabaster ointment, box of ointment, very precious. And she anoints the master. Oh, when Jesus is in the house, there are just a few things I want to tell us tonight. And hopefully if we embrace them, God will revive our hearts, our spirits, and our minds. When Jesus is in the house, we need to use what we have. There are too many uh, church folk declaring what they cannot do instead of thinking about what they can do. The thing that I love about God, you read the Bible, God will never ask us for anything that we don't have. Amen. Never will he ask us for anything that we don't have. When it comes to time, he says, give me 10%. Amen. That's what he says. He didn't put a, an amount on it. He said, give me 10%. If you got a dime, that means he wants to pay our problem is, instead of using what we have, we are often looking at what we don't have. All right, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You remember that widow woman in the book of Kings? Yeah. When her husband died, the man of God came to her and she said, my husband is dead and my boys are getting ready to be put on the auction block as slaves. And, and the man of God said, what do you want me to do? He said, what do you have in your house? And her first word was nothing. Mm. Amen. Amen. I tell y'all, if we read the Bible, we'll be made. Her first word was nothing. Mm. The King James Version, then she said, save or accept a pot of oil. Well. Amen. We need to thank God for what we do have. Amen. And we need to use what we have. Mary had a box of very precious ointment. Spike and work a year's wages. And that's what she had. And what she did is she gave what she had. She secondly started where she was. And there are a whole lot of folk that will stay stuck in whatever position they are because they want to use what they have and start where they are. Listen, listen, my brothers and sisters, when we run this Christian race, we are not running against other folk. Amen. Amen. We are running the race that's set before us. And the thing that I love about God, he will allow us to start right where we are. Amen. 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 Now is the day of salvation. Yeah. Now is the appointed time. You remember that story about the man that had a vineyard and he was seeking out 
workers who work in his vineyard, and he hired yeah. some brothers, amen, in the morning. Then around noon, amen, he saw some brothers standing idly by, and he said to them, I got some work for you to do. And they said, come on, amen, let me go to work. Around 3 o'clock, he saw some more standing idly by. He said, come on, I got some work for you to do. And he allowed them to come in. And at the end of the day, everybody got the same thing. Amen. 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 That's what I love about God. Amen. It's not when you come. It is that you do come. Amen. Start where you are. That's what I love about God, waking us up, giving us a brand new day. He allows us the privilege to have a do-over today. He allows us to get some things right today. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow may never be mine, but thank God I have today. I can get things right today. I have opportunity to mend brokenness today. So give what you have and then start where you are. And then Mary shows us a picture of doing what you can. All right, mm -hmm. Amen. 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 We can't do what we can't do. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Amen. We can't do what we can't do. We, we got to do what we can do. Do what we can do and do it as unto the Lord. When Jesus is in the house, we see that the focus is on him. Amen. In Simon's house, amen, he is, uh, he is the steward of the house. But when Jesus is there, the focus is totally on him. Him knowledge is said on Christ, the solid rock. I stand all of the ground in sinking sand. I'm focusing on the master. Then the book says, the book says when this woman who, who was not invited just barges in and goes straight to Jesus, does not ask to see Simon. And that's what's wrong with a whole lot of us in church. We think folks go to check with us before they do anything. <laughs> Amen. But I want us to know today, this broken world and those that are hurting, they don't care. A man who has titles in the church. They see salvation on the marquee. And what they want is help and salvation. They want to see Jesus. Oh, that I would see Jesus. Jesus is in Bethany. And the Bible, the Bible says there was some in the house as they looked at this labor of love from Mary. The Bible says they were filled with indignation. They were mad. Yeah. They were upset. And I know you're not in here tonight, but you'll be amazed at how many folk are mad in church. <laughs> I mean, mad over stuff that happened 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. It's gone. It's, it's happened. They lived through it. What was meant for evil, God flipped the script and made it good. And there are some still folk that's hanging on to what happened way back when. But oh, one thing that COVID-19 has taught me and is still teaching me, we need to thank God for every day. We need to learn how to press forward. Because any of us could have been wiped out at any moment, but God has allowed us to have one more day, and we need to concentrate on His good. Man, do what you can. Do what you can. And one of the issues that we face is those who want the approval of people. Mm. They're confused about their purpose and they're misusing God's possessions. Mm. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Yeah. I said they want the approval of people. Yeah. If people don't approve them, if they don't acknowledge them, they'll stop what they're doing. Well, you're working for the wrong call. Let me tell you, when it comes to working for God, if it's not in your heart, you ought not put your hands on it. Also, I didn't have you in my notes, but also said I had good intentions. When we were transporting the Ark of the Covenant, I saw that the Ark was shaking. We had put it on a new car. And also would have me to tell you I had good intentions, but I didn't have God the instruction. Amen. 
And I put forth my hand to touch the ark. And I died on the spot. Because if it is not in your heart to serve God, you need to leave your hands on the ground. When Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus is in is in the house, he is the central point. He is the focus of all that needs to be done. I know I wish I could say it like I feel it tonight. But when Jesus is in the house, he makes a difference. He says, leave this woman alone. She has uh, used what she had. She did what she could. She started right where she was. She was not stuck on what happened yesterday because Mary had a messed up past. That's why she was so excited and compassionate about giving God her best because she knew what God had done for her. Amen. You don't know what the Lord has done for me. You don't know what the Lord has done for your neighbor. You weren't there. You don't know what God has brought them out of. You don't know what they had to press through to get to church tonight. Amen. So when they began to praise God and magnify them, if you can't help them, don't hurt them. Move out of their way. Don't try to lock them. Because they got a race to run. Amen. And the gospel singer said, and I'm running by faith. Because at the finishing line, I want to see God's face. That's all I, I'm on assignment to share with us tonight is when Jesus is in the house. And we should make every branch of Zion his house. Yes. Amen. His house. His house. Yes. This, is, this is his house. Yes. Amen. He died for the church. Yes. He's coming back for the church. Yes. He says, as he paints a picture of our churches, he says, I'm married to the church. Right. This is my bride. And I, I'm married not to a building, but to the church that's in our hearts, in our homes. And he says, I am excited about coming back one day, returning the church back to myself. When Jesus is in the house, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that the emphasis is put on him. Yeah. On him. Yeah. Amen. Whenever we sing, we need to ask ourselves, is the emphasis put on him? Yeah. Whenever we have our auxiliary meetings, we need to ask ourselves, is the emphasis put on him? Yeah. Whenever we have church meetings, we need to ask ourselves, is the emphasis put on him? And I'll tell you how you know where the emphasis is, is what you spend the most time talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Here, when Jesus was in the house, amen, they tried to put the emphasis on what Mary gave him. But Jesus quickly shifted and put the emphasis on Mary's heart. Yeah. He said, she's done this beforehand. She is compassionate about what she's doing. And whenever uh, complacency meets compassion, complacency feels some kind of way. Right. Do, do I have a witness here? Yeah. Amen. Because complacency says it don't take all that. All right. Complacency says, who do they think they are? Right. But when you're compassionate about Christ, you say, what more can I do? Right. Amen. My old boy, Luther Barnes, being that song, and he was not just writing words, but he wanted to ask the question, what more can I do? Because Jesus is in the house. Right. And Jesus should be the emphasis of all that we say and do. Yes, here's, a, here's a point, amen, as I as I heard it close on this Thursday evening, amen, they have a party, amen, at my, my in-law's house, and I got to get there. Okay. <laughs> amen, Snoop 77 today, I want to get there and eat some cake and ice cream. Right. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. And, and so, when Jesus is in the house, we need to ask the question, where is the emphasis? Well, if we don't put the emphasis on Jesus, 
We will be fooled and think that it's all about us. We will think that it is our agenda and not Jesus' agenda. If it's your agenda, do something for me. Let me see the nail prints in your hand. Amen. If you want it, amen, hunched up your shirt and let me see where they pierce you in your side. Amen. If you own it, take your shoes off and let me see where they put nail prints in your feet. If you don't have nails in your hands, if you are not pierced in your side, if you don't have a hole in your foot, if you don't have a crown of thorns that imprint on your brow, that's a good indication that the house does not belong to us. But when Jesus is there, he is the central focus. It's all about him. I said it's all about him. Amen. Here it is. During this COVID, when the airports began to open up again, you've heard how the airports were so crowded. People were missing flights. Amen. Flights were postponed. Hmm. People were trying to get to their destination and couldn't get there because there were, was a lack of workers. Yeah. They could not fulfill all of the appointments. There was a man traveling one day and he was on his way to New York and his flight had been postponed. Hmm. And he was looking around. The airport was Filled with individuals just wondering, when am I going to get to my destination? Hmm. He decided to, to go to one of the local shops and get them uh, a soda, a man, some water, and some donut holes. Hey man, y'all know what that is? Hey man, the donut has a, has a hole in it. But the question is, what do they do with the hole that they extract? <laughs> Amen. They sell it. Yes, right. Amen. You've been to Krispy Kreme. Amen. Hands, donuts, and Rocky Mountain. They have the donut hole. They're petite in size. Amen. So that's not so many calories. You can you can eat six. <laughs> so he bought him a pack of six. And he couldn't find the seat anywhere. And he looked over in the corner. There was a man sitting by himself. And he said, well, I hope I don't disturb this man. There are two seats that are vacant on, at his table. And, and so, amen, so he, he went there. Y'all, hey, listen to what I'm saying. I'm almost finished. I said there were two seats. Yeah, all right there. Amen. The man was sitting, but there were two vacant seats, yes, sir. And, 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 and the man was sitting at his table. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this gentleman that's going to New York, he decided to take his bags and his, his six piece of donut holes, his uh, soda and water, and he went down and asked the gentleman, can I have a seat? And the man didn't say anything, but he just gave him the gesture like this. So he sat down. The man put his bags to his side, and the man began to open the donut pack. And he took one of the holes and he ate it. Just waiting, just waiting for his flight. But to his surprise, the man that he sat down with. <laughs> Reached over and got a donut. And so he's looking at this man now, and he wants to say something, but you know how it is when you see somebody, you don't know what they've been through, you don't know what's on their mind, so sometimes you can say, I better hold my But he looked at him, he gave him that look, like, man, what in the world are you doing? Began to look at his clock. Hey, man, I've got 30 more minutes before my flight, before boarding. And so he, he reached in and got another donut. And he pulled the pack a little closer to him. And when he did that, the man reached over the table. Reached in and got another donut. Hey, hey, man. Hey, that's four gold, man. 
Amen. <laughs> man, man, he's a little, little to be turned now. He, 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 he's upset. He's upset, so he pulls it a little closer, and he gets him another one. Amen. That's number five, and he's looking at the man as he cuffs the donuts, and the man gets up, comes around the table, reaches in, and gets the last donut. <laughs> but the man does something this time. He breaks the last donut in half. He gets half. And puts the other half in the box. Right the man walks away that was sitting there initially. And the man that joined his friend and looked at that half and said, I'm not going to eat that. I don't know where that man's hands have been. And, and, and he's getting ready now to get up and go catch his flight. And when he looks down to pick up his bag, he notices that the donuts he bought was on top of his bag. <laughs> All that time, the man was sharing with me. And he thought in his mind that the man was taking something from him. We all think I'm talking about that man, don't you? I'm talking about Anderson Chapel. I'm talking about Royal Red Grove. I'm talking about Jerusalem. After all God has done for us, and we are looking strange like God is taking something from us, and God has given us the best that we could know about. I heard the deacon say, What did he do? He hooked me up this morning. He started me on my way. God is giving and giving and giving and we need to recognize all that I have, all that I hope to be, I owe it all to the Lord. Thank God with Jesus.
it is a request and a directive from the pastor that you will come to this altar tonight we have come for revival and tonight Dr. Walker is saying start from where you are Amen. Jesus is in the house tonight Amen. so we're starting where we are right now and Dr. Walker is going to come. He's going to offer a prayer of rededication, a prayer of unity, a prayer that the Lord would move as he's never moved before within this body. We say the come for revival, so we're going to close tonight with this revival. And I'm coming and standing in the center because we all need to stop like where we are. Amen. He will give us the prayer and the benefits. Amen. Now let the church shout amen. Amen. And if you're physically able to stand right at your seats, if you could stand also in concert with the leaders. Father, we thank and praise you for privilege of just being in the number one more time. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for this revival and the spirit in which you've allowed us to come and share. Yes, Lord. We praise you for your word because we recognize that heaven and earth is going to pass away. But your word shall stand forever. Yes. Thank you, Father God, for this branch of Zion. Yes. Thank you for the leadership here. Amen. And our prayer tonight is that they will indeed just start right where they are. Yes. Yes. That they will use what they have. Yes. That they will do what they can. Right. To be an effective ministry in this community. Yes. And abroad. Yes. Thank you Lord for the under shepherd that you've placed here. Yes. Pastor Lewis, anoint him afresh. Yes. That he may be led by the Holy Spirit yes. as he leads your people. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for unity. Yes. For you said in your word in Psalms 133, Behold how good and how pleasant mm -hmm. it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Yes. We recognize that it's not a gender reference, but that is brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. And if we dwell together in unity in that song, you said you will cause the anointing to flow, starting from the head, yes. going down to the beard, yes. and then finally ending up at the skirts. Yes. You said, Lord, that if there is the unity that is displayed in that song, yes, you said that you will command blessings yes, and life forevermore. Yeah. We thank you for your promise, yeah. and all we need to do is get in place. Yeah. We thank you for your provision, yes, and all we have to do is lean on you. Yes. And so, Lord, we're leaning and depending on you, yeah. not only this branch of Zion, but all of us that are called in this hour yes. to be a mouthpiece for you yes, to be a light in a dark world yes. help us to be that light yes. and recognize that we are merely reflectors yes. because if you are not in the house yes. our reflectors will be dull yes. but if you are in the house there will be a brilliance there will be a radiation and a radiance that comes only from you yes. thank you Lord thank you Lord for your anointing. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your protection. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us of our sin. Thank you for giving us strength for the journey. And Lord, we don't know how long we have, but help us to do what we can while we can. We thank you for it. Thank you for reviving our hearts, reviving our souls, reviving our spirits. Bless Anderson Chapel. Oh, do it in the name of Jesus. Bless those that are listening to my conference call and allow them to have a commitment to give you their all. 
Because you indeed gave us your best. Yeah. Yeah. Bless us and we shall be blessed. Yeah. Keep us and we shall be kept. Yeah. And as we benedict and leave from this place, we pray that the peace of God that this world cannot understand, yes. that that peace will keep our hearts and our minds stayed on Christ Jesus. Yes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and blessed Holy Spirit. Let the church shout amen. 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 And praise God. Praise God. Let's give God praise because it's all in God. Right.